So we've been talking about fatty liver and now I'm concerned. How do I know I have fatty liver? Yeah, you you might even have it. You might not know because you don't actually get symptoms from fatty liver. So it's something that we've started to catch maybe on a routine blood test or on a routine ultrasound, we start to suspect it. So on the blood test, there is something called liver panel. And there are many tests in that. The ones I look for to start building my suspicion whether they have fatty liver or not is something called SGOT, which is a liver enzyme, and SGPT, or it might be reported as AST and ALT under the liver panel. It's on the blood test. And it, even though the lab may say that maybe the cutoff is like above 30, is, no, is not normal, so it should be below 30, I start thinking about fatty liver if it's above 20. The reason is actually about maybe 40, 50 years ago, the normal range for SGOT and SGPT was lower. But as sugar and processed food and junk food has entered the market, we all population level have been eating more and more sugar, more and more processed food. The entire system is now getting a bit more of fatty liver. So this SGOT and SGPT has been slowly, slowly creeping up with time. So the labs have now moved the goalpost that instead of 20 being the cutoff for normal, that it should be below 20, now they might be saying below 30 or below 35 is okay. So I start suspecting when it goes above 20. So I want to know more about that. But first thing, if I go to a lab and I'm getting my blood reports, do I have to explicitly go and tell them that I want SGOT, SGPT? Because that's something that I don't know. Yep. Or how would all these tests get covered? So if you ask for a liver panel of a blood test, they will cover it. You don't actually need the entire thing, but usually the lab will give you a whole package of albumin, globulin, all these other tests, which is related to liver. But when we're talking about fatty liver, the test that we're most specifically interested in is SGOT and SGPT. So once I do that, because you know, once in a while we all do routine blood tests, maybe yearly, that's what people say that you should do, but most of us don't. Um, what do I do once I get these blood reports? Who do I go to? Oh, so your family doctor might look at it um, and they may say, oh, it's normal. It's like in the range and you could go to a liver specialist, but that might be like, they may say, you're not sick enough. Like, why are you coming to me? So I look at it, right? Because I'm interested in helping you change your lifestyle. I'm interested in helping you prevent this become a problem down the road. So as soon as you get a routine blood panel, you yourself can look at it. If it is above 20, there are definitely things you want to do that you can start turning things around after you know that it's fatty liver, which can happen on an ultrasound. You can get an ultrasound or a sonography, which is, again, most people don't walk in and say, oh, I want to look for fatty liver and get a sonography. Correct. Most people come to me with some other problem and they have the sonography and by fluke, or by coincidence, while they were looking at their gallbladder or their kidneys or a kidney stone, by chance, they're also looking at the liver and they say, oh, by the way, you also have a fatty liver. It's almost becoming that people are accepting a little bit of fatty liver to be normal. I have a friend who is a doctor who got himself checked just as a preventive because he was conscious of his lifestyle. He wanted to remain healthy and remain fit, which is a good thing. And on his sonography, the doctor said, you have a little bit of fatty liver. That's normal. I'm not going to put it in the report, but it's there. It's slightly there. And he told me this, that the doctor said to him that it's normal. Now, that's a tragedy happening in society. That fatty liver has become so common. It has become right. common. Get a glucose test saying, oh, I don't have diabetes. I don't have diabetes. But they might be developing fatty liver on the side. So you said it can be reversed. How do I reverse or turn it around? Exactly. So first of all, we need to know what is the problem? Why did you get fatty liver? So fatty liver is to some extent your body's way of trying to prevent diabetes from happening. Your lifestyle has been such that there is high insulin level exposed to your liver. So your pancreas is secreting a lot of insulin to prevent high glucose and prevent diabetes. But that high insulin is causing this fatty change in the liver, which is not normal. So once you know that, we have to think about how to get the insulin levels down. 
For this, I always use my four wheels of the lifestyle car analogy. There are four main lifestyle ways. Within nutrition, what do you do to help fatty liver? Reduce your carbohydrate intake. Reduce your processed foods, your junk foods, your packaged foods, your sugar, your juices. All of that directly causes fatty liver. So the minute you start reducing that, you're helping your liver out. Get enough protein, eat enough healthy fats. The misunderstanding people have is, oh, I have fatty liver, I should stop eating healthy fats. Wrong. To reduce fatty liver, reduce your carbohydrate intake and keep your healthy fats in place. That's the first wheel, nutrition wheel. So food is a big factor which leads to fatty liver. What else can one do? Because So the four wheels of the lifestyle car. So the second wheel is sleep. Actually, getting good sleep helps your liver. So directly helping metabolic health comes from fixing sleep issues, whether it's short sleep, inadequate duration of sleep, or bad quality sleep because of maybe heavy snoring, or because of gadgets and artificial lights, too much sound pollution. Getting a better sleep helps your liver to repair itself. That's the second wheel. The third lifestyle wheel to help the liver and fatty liver is stress management. High stress causes high insulin. So high insulin is the problem. We're trying to reverse high insulin. If you have chronic stress, your stress hormone cortisol is keeping insulin levels high. That is then linked with fatty liver. So again, learning how to manage stress. This means deep breathing exercises, meditation, being outdoors in nature, quality time with loved ones, things that help you relax, rejuvenate yourself and calm the system down and not have the body in high alert panic mode all the time, which most of us nowadays do. And doing that helps your insulin levels to come down. Fourth is exercise, building muscle mass and cardio training. All of this helps your insulin levels to come down. These are four lifestyle wheels. Now, once you have addressed these four lifestyle wheels, you're already on a beautiful track to help your fatty liver because your insulin levels will get improved just by these four changes. The main thing you wanna think about, even if you don't keep on going for more and more blood tests and ultrasounds of your liver, we wanna see inch loss from your stomach area because that small point, even in someone who is not overweight or obese by uh, BMI standards or by official standards, they might be normal body weight or just slightly above. But if they have a small paunch, slightly the belly fat is popping out, that inch gain, which is there around the stomach area, is an indirect marker of fatty liver when you have it. So when you see inch loss at the waist, it's almost like an indirect way of expecting that your body's intelligence is going to realize that we need to remove that fatty liver. The body treats fatty liver like an emergency. So the minute you give these healthy changes on the four lifestyle wheels, body will start reversing fatty liver automatically. And one way you know that you're making progress there is if you see inch loss at the stomach. We call this reducing visceral fat. So there's a word called visceral fat, which is too much fat in the liver, too much fat inside the body coating the organs. So inch loss at the waist can help you correlate that my visceral fat is getting better. And the fifth lifestyle change is fasting. 